Yeah, we just we just talk. talk. We just talk. Yeah, we just fine, talk. Uh, which one is the one that's close up on me? Just for the intro, that one there. This one, this small house here. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. one there. That's cool. Is mm. it recording? Yeah, it's okay, cool. Welcome back to the squad. Make sure like buttons are hit. Make sure you are subscribing right now. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you check us out on our Rumble channel, where this show show and the entirety of it goes out every single Saturday morning or Saturday afternoon, depending on where in the world you are watching. We've got a brilliant panel for you today. Back from his honeymoon, man like KJ is here. Let's all see the ring. I want to see the ring. The ring is on. You know what I'm saying? Look at that. Congratulations. Congratulations. Look at that. Thank you. We've got man like George with us on, as man. well. Yeah. And we've got Don here. Come on, man. Who, yes. who the, sh the show is going to be a little shorter than normal because we're running a bit late because we all live out of East London. We're recording in East London. Don lives in East London <laughs> and he was 20 minutes late. Cheers, Black, Don. Blackpool Tunnel, man. What can I say? It's a <laughs> that's, that's, that's not the black we need to talk about. It's <laughs> black man <laughs> time, bro. That's what we need to talk about. Black man time. That's what we need to say. <laughs> Lots to go through today with big games this weekend, but I want to just touch briefly on, on last night. I know we did a big match reaction on the football terrace about that, but KJ, are you over it yet? Brother, we're an all black for a reason. Same. Funeral, funeral settings. settings. Funeral, funeral settings. It's like we're at a funeral oh, no. today. No, honestly, no. I said on, I said on the match reaction um, that it's relief that that's one less game towards the end of the season. I just want the season to be done. And that is still the case. I just want, I'm so over the season. But when I'm going over the game in my head, it, it, I'm just baffled. It's like, how? Like, what possessed you know what it is <laughs> you know what it is you know that contract that they signed at the start of the season mm. with the whole devil thing mm. that's what possessed them <laughs> that, is, that is what possessed them to go from kickoff all the way into your half and allow like Maguire and someone and only like two people at our back line it made no sense mm. it I, made absolutely i no was sense. just so confused at like how man united have let it collapse yet again in the final moments of the game. They've done it just last week, Brentford. You've done it, what, last month against Fulham. You've done it probably about three or four more times Champions this season. League, Champions, Champions League, Champions League yeah. a few times. Like, it's time and time again. It's five minutes left of the game and you'd think they think, oh, let's just keep the ball, let's keep compact. No mistakes, guys. Come on, like, just get the ball. For and they they literally let Madueke run down the wing, Dalo. I <laughs> don't have a clue what he's doing. Oh, he was getting cooked, training. by the way. Nah, he was getting cooked. He, he's been but good, he was but he was training him, and it was a poor challenge. And then leaving Mount open on the edge of the box for that corner. It's crazy yeah. business. From yeah, it's, Man it's United. for me, I'm, I'm most frustrated about the fact that there are still Man United fans out there who are defending Ten Hag. I understand there are player problems. I understand mm -hmm. there's, there's, there's players that need to go. More quality needs to come in. But the amount of times we collapse, and we collapse through nearly always the same type of goals, yep. the, the, the pull back at the, onto the edge of the box, Cole Palmer being free, it, uh, why am I not surprised? The first goal they scored, Gallagher was free. When Gallagher hit the post at the end of the first half, he was free. The equaliser against, against Brentford the other day, free on the edge of the yep. box. We did it earlier on in the season, if everyone we scored away at Arsenal. Right, sit, be resolute for 10 minutes. No, free on the edge of the box. This is a tactical situation. Throughout the most of the game, no midfield. Mm -hmm. How do we know it's tactical? As soon as we went 3-2 up, we stopped attacking, plugged the midfield and, and nullified Chelsea for a large yep. part until the last few minutes when we decided to allow Madawaki to be one-on-one -on -one with Delo, who, by the way is on his weaker side, where you've got AWB on the other, who is a specialist on one-on-one -on -one defending, mm. but you put AWB on Mihailo Mudrik, <laughs> who is gonna be no threat really to anybody, in my opinion, not in comparison to Carl Palmer, yeah. right? Yeah. And not, so yeah, look, the, the manager's gotta go. There's no more defending him for me, but we start, start the countdown to the end of the season now. And look, I still wanna win games. I'm not one of these United fans mm. that wants to lose. Yeah. But for me, that's just, it's beyond the straw that broke the camel's back. It's the cherry on top of the icing on top of the cake. This man has got to go. And genuinely, and it's anger probably talking, mm. but I'd take Southgate over him right now than keep him. <laughs> That's how angry I am. That's how angry I am. You know what? You know what? It's, no, it's a wild shout because I would never take Southgate for my kids' football team. <laughs> Let alone Manchester United. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, you, you don't mean that. You but don't, you don't mean that. It's, it's just anger. No, no, it's just but anger but the thing is, done. this is how bad mm. he's got us playing. Like, that, uh, you would resort. Like, I've seen man them saying Ollie back, and I'm sitting there like, you know what? Yeah. You know what it is? I wouldn't, I wouldn't KJ mind. can't relate to this because he is too good a Christian. But you know, when you're younger, <laughs> you have a row with the missus, and you go out and you're like, 
I'm finding someone tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it feels, right? So you don't you don't like that person. You're not into that person. <laughs> you're not just doing it. But it's just like, I'm going to do it out of spite. The Southgate thing is spite. I don't really want Southgate. I want a much better manager. But that's the level of anger I've felt today because we should be nowhere near the top four race no. with how we've played. Yep. But we've had the last two, we should have six, we should have five more points from the last two games yeah. because we scored l late winners. We were leading with seconds to go and we couldn't see it out. You had five points to our tally and there's far more pressure on Villa, yeah. far more pressure on Tottenham, but we just don't have the, the quality. We don't have the, the tactical nous and we don't have the brains for it. And all of that, I feel stems from the coaching staff and it's horrendous at Man United. One of the funniest yeah. things that I've actually thought was that when Ten Hag came in, we, we often spoke about how he bottled it in the Champions League against Spurs. Yeah, yeah. He was a bottle and people just rear off because obviously last year, first season, he'd done an amazingly job for his first year at Man United. But this season has epitomised everything that is wrong with Ten Hag. Mm. Bottling it time and time again for Manchester United. Like you said, you, like with, without of the tactics that has happened within those last minutes, you guys could be 10 or nine, even more points up at the table in with mm. those goal, the amount of goals you've conceded those last five minutes. Do you want to know the, the most, th there's loads of damning stats for anyone defending him, but these are the damning stats. Only Sheffield United I love this. concede yeah. more shots on goal than us per game in the Prem. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. We have, oh, that in itself is horrendous as an example. Of some of it you see that, that the hole in our midfield, we literally have a, a low block defensive line with a high pressing front line and, and one, nothing in the middle. One, in the middle. Yeah. one midfielder <laughs> trying yeah, to uh, the, the, the polo team. tactic, like it's, it's ridiculous, right? And, and I do mean this, and we can say this because it's on Rumble. I'm surprised squatters haven't moved into that space <laughs> <laughs> and, and taken hold of it. Honest to God, it's ridiculous. But the most, for me, one of the most damning stats is this. Rasmus Hoyland is ranked 50th in the league, 50th, for chances created for. So the amount of opportunities created for a striker, yeah, he no. sits at number 50 in the league. So there's, there's basically no link between... So, the there's, no, so we create chances, much. but the chances always fall to one of the wide players in terms of the way the manager has us playing, that's where the opportunities fall. If you, you're buying a goal-scoring number nine, your system has to dictate that you want the majority of chances to fall to him. Yeah. To fall to him. Mm -hmm. Then secondary to that is the inside forwards. So we've got a striker that needs service who we are, our system doesn't create opportunities for. Yeah. All of these things, and I still see this man being defended. And, that, and that's what I was saying to you at the start of the season. I said, I'd rather take Hoyland instead of Jackson because we're actually creating chances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now, I, I, when I deep it, I can't lie, I've done a combined level with Staff here and I put Hoyland in there. But when I thought about it after, I said, no, Jackson's had a better season than him though. Like he has. He's, he's, he's had a better season. But, he's shown me more this season, I'll be yeah, real. No. I know he's not everyone's cup of tea. I'm not saying he's, the, he's like the finished article, but in terms of his link-up play, we missed it so much when he went to AFCON. Mm. We had Broja with the cheese string knees. I've told you lot, like, he's finished. His knees are <laughs> gone. Oh, he's done. He can't even get into yeah. any squads at Fulham, right? And those Chelsea fans getting mad when we when we loaned him out, right? And then we had Cole Palmer as a nine and he, he can't play there. That's not his position, mm. you know? Jackson, for me, he shouldn't be starting for Chelsea, but from what I've seen from him this season, in comparison to the beginning of the season, he has improved a lot. You know what I'm saying? And for me, he's had a better season well, than Hoyland, well, man. So Jackson, Jackson, he's had a better though. season than Hoyland. He was better than Hoyland yesterday. So this is the thing. Hoyland is a better number nine. Jackson, for me, a bit like Darwin Nunes, when you move him out onto the wing and get him to just use his pace running at fullbacks, I think he's, I think he's excellent mm. at doing that. Or when you get him to drift out wide, that's what he's great. He's never going to be a prolific goal scorer, but at least your manager has found a role for him in the team that works. We're playing Hoyland, but we're not creating a system that works for him. Boy, it's, yeah. you, it's, it's, an, you, it's an absolute you, mess. You know what, I know what makes mess. it worse as well. You had Bruno Fernandes. Now, I've, I'm personally finished with Bruno Fernandes. I can't wait to see him leave. Terry, are you finished with him? Are you finished with him, Tell? No. no <laughs> he'll, he'll never be finished with him. <laughs> he's going to start bringing up the He's not finished with Bruno. It's like the way I'm not going to be finished with Rashford. There's always that player that you're not finished with Rashford. I, I'm, I will never so be when finished. So when I say not finished, I'm not, I'm I'm not surprised about Rashford. When I say not finished, I can't believe that. When I say not finished, I mean it this way. I know it's the, the way we train our players yeah. to, to, to play. Just go and watch the last 15 games of Portugal and watch Bruno in them games. He yeah. looks a different football player. Yeah. And I know that isn't the overarching barometer. What I mean, but I still think between him and Rashford, I feel like one of them has to go. And not because I think they're bad players, not because I think they're personally holding us back, but we need a clear out of management, Doctors, they've got to go. Our players are dropping like flies. Well, Arsenal gave you a spy. Yeah, 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 yeah. gave us a spy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Arsenal gave you a spy. I, I feel like we need to remove sort of 
faces that are synonymous yeah. with the failure yeah, as well. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. If yeah. you get rid of uh, Maguire's got to go, McTominay, I think you then look at a Bruno or a Rashford and move them yeah, listen, on. Listen, listen, I'm but, saying, but I'm saying, but, but the point, my original point was going to be, you got Bruno Fernandes, who has been a high chance creator in the Premier League for the last, what, five years? Yeah, cool. I, but as Ten Hag's had him, he's gotten further and further away from the striker. So mm. now you are relying on Young Garnacho, who's raw as hell, trying to create for Hoyland, and Rashford, who's never been this creative winger. He's yeah. always been inside. For, so this is where, the, again, the faults of Ten Hag is being shown. It's like, mm. you're not even using your players in the right and way. And Bruno's mm. chances, he's yeah. a high chance creator, but his chances are balls to the wide players who are, who are coming in from coming diagonal in, yeah. runs. It isn't for the striker. And so again, that's what I'm, I'm not, barring Maynou, Garnacho, Hoyland. Hoyland. That's it. Barring those, honestly, I don't care. Outside of those three, I've, I don't care about anyone else. That they And what I mean by that is, it isn't about the individual. Whatever the new owners decide is going to be our style of play and what we need for it. So if they turn around and go, our style of play needs a highly creative number 10, then I want Bruno staying because we know he can do that. But if they want someone who's more of a James Madison, good creator, yeah, but yeah. far more technical on the ball, maintaining possession, then fine, by Bruno, we'll bring someone in. I'm not about... Standing, the only reason I mentioned those other players is because they're so young and raw. I think they can be developed, yeah. but it's about because there's always, there's always room for a menu in every team in the world. Mm. So for me, it's a case of I just want to get behind whatever this project is. I want the right players for it. No more square pegs in round holes mm. because we play, and it's a great segue, really. We play Liverpool on Sunday, biggest game of the season, biggest game in English football, one of the biggest games in the world. Can anyone make an argument around this table now <laughs> for Man United on, man. doing a madness and at the very least stopping Liverpool? No chance, Terry. There, 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 there's absolutely no chance. When you look According at this game... According to Sam, there's always a chance. <laughs> I, I, I listened to you lot earlier on Straight Facts. <laughs> Do you guys, the way, now, because the way that I see it is that it, although Man United are playing in a game where they tend to turn up against Liverpool, they tend to sort of play out their skin being at a rivalry. Mm. I just look at this Liverpool team and... I mean, we saw the Sheffield game where you thought we they had a... They, I mean, a lot of people questioned them when they went 1-1 and people thought maybe this is the drop from Liverpool. But no, yet again, Liverpool get the job done. I see this as being another game where Man United might start off looking well. You might score a goal, but Liverpool are just going to get the job done. And you guys are a part of that. You guys are a part of people, their process of going to Old Trafford, beating them and they're on their way to winning the league. And this is going to be too big of a fixture for you guys. You guys just said, like, there's the stat you said, the amount of shots and goals that you guys concede is pretty much down there. Your, your goal difference is minus one at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> You're sitting in the, top of the in the top half of the table, yep. your goal difference is minus one. Liverpool is the worst team that you can give up chance after chance to because they've yeah. got killers. Mm -hmm. They've got killers uh, and in the, there. And, and the thing about them goals. as well, uh, their mentality is not like us. We went up by two goals yesterday and I'm thinking, yo, I'm still not comfortable with that because yeah. I know my team. I know that there's so many players in my team that just give away so many individual mistakes. Our heads drop, you know, silliness all the time, right? But Liverpool, once they get that one and they mm. get that two, they're just going to keep going. They're going to keep going. You know, we saw Liverpool beat you at, at Old Trafford. Is it 5-0 before, isn't it? They beat you okay, and this, okay, yeah. this is what nil, I want to go on right? to as well. George, you <laughs> said, this oh, is the thing. Uh, George just said, like, oh, Liverpool is a game that Manchester United like, get up for. Mm. That is a false narrative, my brother. Because if you actually look at the history, <laughs> I have to bring it up. Because I'm like, wait, are we, listen are we seeing the same games? Yes, we beat them 4-3 in the FA Cup. Nil-nil. Mm. All-timer, by the way, that game. Yeah, amazing. Nil-nil. Mm. 7-0, we lost to them last season. Then we, okay, we beat them 2-1. So then, bad. last three games after that 2-1 uh, win, 4-0 Liverpool, 5-0 Liverpool, 4-2 Liverpool, all in the Premier League. We beat them before that mm. in the FA Cup again. So we we have a good FA Cup record against them in recent years, but we, in the league... We've, we've beat, I looked at it earlier, we've beaten them in the Premier League three times in the last 10 years. Yeah. Um, so that's why when I hear Liverpool fans, again, Liverpool fans are always out here trying to create this Disney story. They're always out there trying to create this underdog narrative. And it's, it's, I don't Tom know what Liverpool man. fans do. They're, they're <laughs> Liverpool, every Liverpool fan I've met my whole life, including two of my brothers, no matter how good they are, you can say you're the best team in the world. And they look at you and go, no, it's the, the universe. Whatever you, however much you praise them, however good the achievement is, they will always try and push it a level further. And I understand their logic that, a derby is a little bit of a leveller. And you see it in their games against Everton. Yes, the derby is a leveller. But Everton have barely won in 20 years at their ground. And Liverpool seldom lose at Goodison yeah. Park. Mm -hmm. So it isn't that much of a leveller in actuality. And I'm saying it, look, I don't think we've got, we've got one fit senior centre-back in the team. We've yeah. got no fit left-back. 
We've got Rashford out of form, a midfield with holes all over it. If Liverpool do not beat us, so if we get a point or if we miraculously beat them, it's an absolute embarrassment. 100%. And I will honestly say that from that point, as the way I've lived, even though Liverpool are my favourites to win the league from here, if they were to foul against this United team now, at the business end of the season where every result matters more, mm-hmm. especially when you're at a title race, these, these games are bigger, they don't win. If they can't put it together to beat this dis- dishevelled, dysfunctional Man United team, they should be. They should declare the rest of the season and stop playing because it's an embarrassment. You know, it's embarrassing. And, I, and no, I say that as a United fan. I yeah. hate saying it, but I can't even make an argument. Of course, there's a chance we could win. There's always a chance, but I can't make an argument of how. You know, because we just because all of the underlying metrics and statistics show that we're a relegation team with money. That's what it shows. <laughs> that's what yeah, it that's shows. what I'm saying. Yeah. So if Liverpool can't beat us. You've really got to look at how are you champions or how are you going to be champions elect if you're not beating on paper a relegation team. Like that's what they're the facing. Thing is, though, you lot, you lot are mad weird though, because as bad as you are, there are games where I've looked at you and you've actually looked all right. Like yesterday how many, how in the many? first, in the first, okay, not many, innit? Here we go. But I'm saying what is most games you have moments, right? Where five, 10 minutes you're doing something mm. and then before you know it, everyone loses their head again, you know? Manu is a young player, but he's your best midfielder right now. Mm. Bruno for me is not, He's grenade football. You know, you've got Casemiro's legs are gone. You're gonna need Manu to turn up for this game. As as bad as that, as mad as that sounds, because he's what 18. Yeah. He's gonna have to turn up and try and do something in that midfield because Liverpool on that transition is gonna be but the not like is, Chelsea. They're they're very clinical, them guys. Mm. You know what I mean? It's gonna be dangerous for you lot. You know, e- even when Man United do turn up though, they tend to have moments. That's games. what I mean. It's, it's moments it's, it's in games. It's literally just yeah. moments, but yeah. those moments can only get them so far because yeah. they'll score a goal like they mm. did against City, Rashford, banger, yeah. one, yeah. one, one nil. And then they, they just start to fall apart. Like you, we all know Man United, once you play them long enough, you're going to yeah. break them down. Yeah. 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 And the longer the game goes on, the worse they get. Because yeah. once it gets to that, that sort of 75th minute onwards, Point. I'm pretty much I'm pretty sure and, and, that, and, that go, and that goes, yeah, yeah. And that goes down to the coaches every time, every time I look at Ten Hag honestly the man looks like he doesn't know what he's doing he just looks oh, and now he's I'm always like, scratching literally, literally, I know how he lost his hair I actually know how he lost his hair bro. he's confused he's been scratching, scratching he's been, and, and I guarantee every team in the league when they see Man United at 80 minutes they're like Let's put it on them. Yeah. And we coming over something. We remind me at the moment. Do you guys remember watching Amir Khan box? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that yeah, guy yeah. could box someone's head off for six rounds, eight rounds, nine rounds, 12 rounds. But you knew at any moment, one big punch on that chin and it was that, lights out. out. And yeah. as soon as we get hit on our chin, so our legs go, our heads go, and we be- and we just become so disorganized that we fall apart. So we could go 2-0 up against Liverpool. And until that final whistle goes, I won't believe it's possible yeah. to beat them because it could go at any minute. And that's that's the worst bit. I get more... Mm. My, I watched a lot of games with my brother. And he said to me last night when we went 2-2, he went, you don't celebrate Man United's goals anymore, do you? I said, brother, I'm loving the fact we scored. That's like me. <laughs> but I can't celebrate. He went, why? I said, because... I'm now more sk- nervous than ever that we're going to concede again. It, it's true. And that's because the team is so bad. I used to, when Man United used to score goals, we'd score a goal first and I'd go, we won. nine times out of 10, we won that game. Mm. In fact, 99 times out of 100, we went on to win that game in the majority of my lifetime. It's the other way now. Scoring goals makes me more nervous than when it's nil-nil. Because mm-hmm. ideally what I want is it to be nil-nil into the 91st minute, then we score. Yep. That's the most relaxing yeah. for me. We go one nil up, because I know what our manager does. We sit back, we start to absorb, we stop attack. Like we stopped attacking Chelsea when they were overly attacking. When we had Rashford on the pitch, we, didn't, we, had, one, we had no shots. After we scored our third goal, up until that point, we had 90 shots. He was pathetic, by the way. He was just came on jogging, all yeah, his energy. It's, and... it's, it's crazy, but I, th- I think Liverpool w- will win this. Will win this game. They're, they're, they're in formidable mm. form. Uh, McAllister looks Phenomenal, ridiculous man. at the moment. So, let they... me just let me just draw some people out, yeah. Because start of the season, what were they saying about McAllister? Oh, he's a fraud. He's this and that. Who? Uh, Who? A lot of people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm not gonna. I, yeah. I, there's no one specific that I can think but of there, right there, now. There's a group. But there was, there was a group of people yeah, online yeah, yeah. that were trying to grill him, right? And I was like, listen, the guy's playing as a DM. He's not a lone six. Let him play in his normal position when they when they get someone in. And look at him; he's flourishing right now because he's playing in his best position. But if you look at it. You know what I mean? En- Enzo's now looking better. When you've got a top class manager and brilliant coaches drilling you through that system. 
you improve. Yeah. And I mean, I think Endo doesn't get the credit he deserves because he's not scoring goals. The way he's settled has been brilliant. Mm -hmm. It's yes. allowed McAllister to flourish. Who, listen, Declan Rice for me is still my, my my signing of the season because I think he's been brilliant all year round. Yeah. I still think he is. <laughs> this guy, no, no, no. Terry is done. Like you hate, you, you hate no, Arsenal no, so no, much, no, no, no. you hate I, him so I'm much. Just, I'm just saying it's not that like clear. You know, I, there's a debate for it, but I'm putting someone else before him. And, and right, you know, no, I don't, and, who are you putting? You putting Cole Palmer? No, no, I'm not. I'm not because, okay. because we're eleven. So, so 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 signing so of the season, and who you putting instead of Declan Rice? Um, I probably don't know. I probably say Matt. I probably say Matt because I, I, I expected okay. this from Rice. So, so this is what I would say. Oh, yeah, but that, that, I expected this from okay, Rice. Okay, but this, this is where it's I... It's true. So this I is expect where... Beyonce to be the, one of the best performers uh, in the world. Uh, Only because she is doesn't mean she's not. No, you know no, no. I mean? no, no. <laughs> Imagine that. You say to Beyonce, yeah, you haven't won the Grammy this year. Why? You have got the best album. You have got the best music video. You've got the best voice. But we thought you, you would. Did. You don't deserve to win <laughs> it. No, no. That's, that's not the point that I'm making. You lot are <laughs> you lot you lot No, that's what get Okay, let me rephrase what I'm saying. Declan Rice Declan Rice has definitely helped Arsenal elevate. Right, because like I said, all season defensively they've been good. I call that the Bermuda Triangle, right? Gabriel, De Declan yeah. Rice, and Saliba. He's been very good, right? But for me, like I've said, McAllister. When you think of the money they've paid for him, the fact that everyone kind of writ of Liverpool, they didn't expect Liverpool to be in a title yeah. race. Mm -hmm. Even me, I was like, listen, Liverpool. We see Liverpool. Well, yeah, four, I don't four. see them sustaining this without a DM. But McAllister, he keeps stepping up, and he's he's actually gotten even better. Than what he was at, at from what I've seen. So Brighton. McAllister for me, I, I think he's a great shout, especially mm. when it comes pound for pound because yeah. he costs thirty five yeah, million, one hundred percent. What I would say though is I feel that he's kicked on since Christmas stroke January, where I think Declan Rice from the first game of the season until now has been one of the best players in the league, and that is why I would still side with him as signing of the season. And although you can do the pound for pound argument coping with being a hundred million pound player we yes. have seen it dwarf so yeah. many people yeah. Yeah, i think you yeah. actually have to we do that a lot we go actually i'm going to vote for the guy that was cheapest and, and done well and then we always mean, laugh at the mm. the lukaku's and the pogba's yeah. and the other hundred million pound flops the Grealish years. you know that cole palmer has scored more goals this season yeah. than Grealish has in the last three years three combined yeah. <laughs> so you look at those hundred million pound signings and you look at how declan rice has flourished that for me is why I would. I mean, people will say it's because I'm an Arsenal simp, but for me, <laughs> it's more to do with handling it. that pressure. The thing is, if if he gets it, I'm not going to be mad at it. I, I, there's a debate for him. There's a debate for McAllister. Cole Palmer's not going to be in there because of where we are in the league, you know. But he in, should in, individually. I think he could be because you, again, your argument for him is he's doing it in a dysfunctional Chelsea team that yeah. looks horrible. And the thing but is, though, unfortunately, he's just not going to get over them. I, I just That's feel the like thing. with those with Cole Palmer, it's like how measurable is it? How good he's been because, like you said, he hasn't contributed to enough wins. His True. Team, True. Like, although mm. he's scored a lot of goals and like he's done things, he's not done enough to actually get Chelsea over the line. Yeah, but so I don't feel like he's in that conversation. Whereas mm. Rice and McAllister, as we saw last what? night, yeah. McAllister yeah, scoring game winning goals. Rice, Man United. With Game Palmer, goals, these are, mm. They're literally taking their team to the next level. Rice, mm. you could look at him and say, he's probably the main reason why Arsenal have had the best defence in the league this yeah. season. Like him going to Arsenal and being that anchor, which they didn't have in Thomas Party last season, has transformed the way they play. They can do what they've done against City, where they sort of sit back, part the bus like Mourinho, because Rice is there sweeping up, covering. They never had apparently a Apparently he like told that. Antonio they were going to play like that. I told you that they changed yeah. up how they were playing. He told them, apparently he told Antonio, it came out, I saw it on Twitter, um, I'll show yeah. you guys after, yeah, that um, he saw Rice the day before the game at the airport and he said, we're going to, you're going to see a completely different Arsenal. I don't know how true it is, but yeah. I did see a quote from Antonio. Apparently he saw Rice. But on that, bro, it's like, with Palmer, bro, without him, we are actually in a relegation dogfight. <laughs> we are in a dogfight. We're, we're a one man team. Everything goes through him, bro. Yeah. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's one, he's got, he's got the most um, goals and assists in a single game in the whole um, of the Prem. Right, but the only thing that's going to let him down is the fact that Rice and McAllister are going for for the league. Yeah, so and, 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 us, and performing in these last know, performing yeah. in these last ten games of the league, the, you, we, we've all had teams in title races. Even even George <laughs> once upon a time. We all we all that's not a Hazard. <laughs> but we all know the pressure oh, on those games. They're different, and we, that's the thing. With with if McAllister's last five, six, seven games are like the Sheffield United game, again that elevates you. If Declan Rice yeah. maintains this. And we'll come on to Arsenal in a minute, but through this really difficult run they're on, it's, it elevates you to another level. And That's I think, thing. and so for me, that I know that they vote for the PFA Player of the Year about a month ago, which I always find ridiculous. Yeah. But when it comes to fans kind of handing out and agreeing on those awards, we all wait until the end of the season, which I think is the best yeah. way because this last 10 games is, is pivotal. But on Man United Liverpool, score predictions, what we going with? I'll go to you first, Don. I'm going to say 3-1 Liverpool. 
That's generous. Oh, it's it's glory. It's glory. Because <laughs> <laughs> you guys are just dodgy, man. Honestly. Nah, listen, listen. They're, dodgy. Wait, they're doing five again. They were, they were going to slap us five now. Who's that guy that came high on five. yesterday and, and put his tongue out? What's his name again? Oh, uh, Big Willie, no Dilly. <laughs> <laughs> Willie, Willie Kambuala. Yeah, yeah, he yeah, could yeah. hold that. Yeah. Yeah, he could hold that. I like him as a young centre back, but he shouldn't have Football gods. Man. The football yeah, gods yeah, yeah. came down they hard. Always, yeah, honestly, yeah, honestly. They, yeah. they hated it. Um, but I got 3 1 as well, man. 3 1 Liverpool. I see you guys who, scoring. Who, who, who's going to score for us? Who's going for us? You know what? You guys are just spontaneous at times, isn't it? You pop up with a goal and I see that yeah. happening. And Liverpool are vulnerable, man. As, well, much, as, well, as much as I rate them won't, going forward, it won't be Garnacho because Garnacho only scored braces this year. Like every Premier League game, I think he scored and yeah. it's been a brace. Yeah. Like, no, well, he's got seven goals. So that can't be true. But he scored three braces and then one singular. So I hope it's Garnacho. Oh, yeah, yeah, the bicycle kick was with the bicycle it, kick. Was the was the yeah, and the other one yeah. was a bicycle kick. Yeah. So. Won't be in. What's your score prediction? That's, it says five. Oh, he says five. Oh, sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're sticking to that. Five nil. Yeah, five nil. They're beating us five nil. I'm going to go with Man United two, Liverpool four. Yeah. I, th I think we'll score a couple of goals against them, but they will, th th they'll, they'll beat us. Um, uh, That's yeah. a shame to say. Arsenal go away to Brighton. They've got, that's, that's the beginning of a really tough period. I know they had loot in midweek, but that was always going to be a win yeah. and it was very easy. They're away at Brighton. Then they played Bayern Munich. Then they're a, then they're at home to Villa, away to Bayern Munich, and then away to Wolves. All in the space of basically two two and a half weeks in in that period. How do you see them handling Brighton this weekend? Now Brighton don't have a good winning record recently, but they haven't lost a lot of games. Arsenal's time against Brighton in the Premier League has been varied. Uh, how do you see this game going? Five PM kickoff. It's at the Amex, ain't it? So, yes. And I know Arsenal do have a... Like, say, it's a tricky record against Brighton because some years they, they literally get pumped by Brighton 3-1, sort of similar to you guys. And then sometimes they turn up against them. I think... <laughs> no, I found yeah, that remember, straight. Yeah, I, I, found to, that I straight. to remind you of that one. Um, <laughs> but I think this game, probably Arsenal are going to have too much firepower for them. I generally don't see Arsenal so far. Like you said, their defence has been so resolute that although they've slipped up in a few games early on in the season, I feel like they've learnt from them. And at this point right now, the, only the big games are going to cause them problems. And mm. I think the games against the likes of Brighton and so on, they're just going to be able to get their goals nice and early, which Arsenal tend to do. They do be out, like put teams away, get two goals within the first half, and then they're going to be able to defensively just sit back and do similar to what they've done against Luton. Like they, They'd already won the game in the first half. Mm. They played out the second half. So I actually think Arsenal are going to win this game. Um, I think, like you said, it gets really tough for them after the Bayern game. I feel like it's going to be mentally draining if they know that, they let's say, they don't beat Bayern mm. and they've got to go into that second leg and put out a big, big performance. So I think leading up into that, that these games are going to be confidence boosters and Brighton's just going to be another don't, one. Don't you, think, don't you think that the, the Brighton performance against Liverpool will give them a little bit of confidence though? Because I thought they, they actually gave yeah, Liverpool they, a really good game. Listen, they, the confidence is good for Brighton. Yeah. But it, it doesn't matter. You think Arsenal are going to be too, too much for them? Because I think Arsenal are just, be, just better than them. And, and, and I want to say something and it's going to sound mad. I'm, Arsenal are getting to the point kind of like Man City to the point of where I'm like, how do you beat these guys? Mm. There's no clear now. There's no more clear. I don't think there's a clear way to beat Arsenal. Mm. Like, like before, before you could say to uh, okay, just sit in a low block. I look at their fullbacks. I think that's their weak point at yeah. the back. Yeah, but it's, but Man City's. I mean, you say that, but Ben Ben White's been one of the best fullbacks yeah. in the league. No, he has, he has, yeah. no, he, has. he has. But you know, Adingra. I hope he's got a little sign for me. You know, I, th I do think Arsenal will win the game. Yeah, but I just don't think it's gonna be business as usual. I don't think it's going to be as straightforward as what, what a lot of people think, man. I think the way Brighton play, it's good, man. So I feel the it's way good. Brighton play, though, could, when you play Arsenal now, because you said the Bermuda Triangle, as you called them, with, yeah. with, with Saliba, Gabriel and, and, and solid. Rice. Solid. They're solid now. No team stops the ball being progressed against them as much as Arsenal. So when you attack as much as Brighton and you leave that space mm -hmm. in behind and... The only mistake I feel they made against City away, and I know some of it was forced because of injuries and players not being fully match fit, but it didn't have that pace to spring yeah. on them. Yeah. But that's Man City. Brighton are going to leave so much space yeah. in behind. That's I think it's just going to be counter-attack football, like counter-attack yeah. football. And I think I think Arsenal will win. It's not going to mm. be an easy game, I agree. Mm. But I, very, I think it will be, a, I can quite comfortably say, 3-1 Arsenal, okay, something along those yeah. lines. You, so you, say, you, say, you say they leave a lot of space 
and and that's what they usually do. But honestly, against Liverpool, they were very disciplined, bro, off the ball. Like I was, I was quite impressed because you know I want deserving. Mm. And I've always said for me, off the ball, Brighton they like to press yeah. and leave a lot of space in behind. But I saw a different Brighton when they played Liverpool. Yeah. They were quite disciplined. Yeah. They were quite reserved. I agree, but, but they, are, they, are, back a little but they bit. are Liverpool's bogey team, though. There's something about yeah, their yeah, style yeah. versus yeah. Klopp's yeah. style. <laughs> it seems to just be work. a really bad match yeah. for Klopp. If Pretty that makes good. sense. Mm. And, but answer, literally, answer me this question: How do Brighton beat Arsenal? I don't see them beating Arsenal. No, no, but uh, if, mm. if if you were to say they, this is a way, yeah. how do they do? How do, they do? It, it's the fullbacks, bro. I'm, I'm, you just have to keep attacking them. They don't have Matoma though. He's he's out of the. Yeah, but Dingra, bro, Dingra has been yeah, good. That's he's one been, side. He's, he's on the other side. Been, who's their right? Who's their right winger? They've, they've, they've been playing Tariq Lamptey right at right, 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 uh, right wing. Mm. No, he's been playing right back. Is it right, 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 no, I swear, no, five to back, right wing back. Oh, so. right wing back. Yeah, yeah, Life score, life score might be not getting. And Brighton like to play a lot on the left. That's yeah. one thing that I realised that yeah. their patterns come a lot from the left to a Dingra. Ben White, like I said, look, Ben White's and been good this season, but when he comes up against a good winger, he, he can get at him. He's not invincible at the back. That's the thing with him, he, man. He's not, he's not, but I just don't, off the top of my head, I can't remember like either of their, like I've seen Zinchenko get cooked a few yeah, times, yeah, but yeah, yeah. like yeah. Kivior's done well since he's been in and, and you know, uh, Tommy, the thing is Tommy Asu's back now, even if they've got a fullback who's getting cooked, They've got players on the bench you can bring on and change it up. I just, yeah, I just, this is the kind of game that I think even as far back as as, as recently as last season, Arsenal, you go, oh, they could slip up. I just don't, Arsenal away at Old Trafford potentially, Arsenal away at White Hart Lane, yes. Going away now to teams that are sort of anywhere from eighth and below, I just see Arsenal as being too good. Yeah. I really yeah, do. I, mean, I, th- I think they've just gone to that level now. They've gone into that space, mm. similar to where sort of Liverpool are now, where Liverpool, all the small games, you, you never doubt Liverpool. Yeah, it's yeah. only the big games that sometimes you look at a few teams, you go, ah, oh, Liverpool yeah, slip yeah. up here. But mm. these games are just but, business but, as usual. But this is what I mean when they're getting to that point. Even Liverpool's at that point now. It's like, how do you, like, I don't, you don't, there's no clear way to beat them. It's annoying. Like, like, there's no, those three at the top, Right now, yeah. there's no. I don't see how. <laughs> how do you? Deep that. How we beat, do you we beat, beat them, but even when we beat them, it was so not convincing. Yeah, they needed just, a couple of reds. Mm, so. Yeah, no, it's, think, you are you are right. I think it's very hard as football fans to sit there and it's it's very hard to pull on a a weakness and go. Well, you attack them this way. We set up in this way. This is the formation we need, and this will yeah. work. It's just. I mean, that does sound like a lot of Don's analysis. Don, yeah, yeah, but Chelsea's yeah, but, games, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, but the thing is, when, when you <laughs> Don's like this, isn't it? He's like, if I was two foot taller, yeah. <laughs> twice as fast, and a better accuracy, I could have played in the NBA. Don definitely <laughs> saves scrubs on FM. He definitely tries every tactic. Nah, no, and then I'm, I'm reload the thing. I'm gonna show you lot some clips of me banging ball after. Don't worry, I'll show you. Oh, I'll yeah, show yeah, you lot. You know what I mean? But yeah, man. I wonder what you were gonna say then. Banging. I was like, I don't want to see that. <laughs> no, I think I think I think Arsenal will get the job done. Yeah, I just think uh, Brighton this year they've got lesser quality. Again, they're missing some key players. Mm. They play some good football, but Arsenal have got more quality in it. So they should yeah. get the job done. I'm just they, saying I don't yeah, think yeah, it's going to be done. straightforward. They're done. Mm. So you say Arsenal got more quality? Mm. Does Saka have more quality than Palmer? Yeah. <laughs> Is that segue? Is that segue into the next bit there? You, huh? you, you don't rate. You don't think Palmer's done more than Saka, do you? No, no, no. That's a different. That's a different debate. I can't talk about. I can't argue against Saka. You think he's more CV, talented? That's but the... I think he's. Yeah, I think Palmer's got more to his game. I think he's more talented than Saka. I think he's got more natural ability than Saka. And for me, already he's cleared. He's cleared his best GA in less games in in, in his first season. Start. Well, I thought you were start, man. I thought you were on a stat, man. I never said that. I use stats secondary, bro. Stats secondary. I think st- uh, secondary. I, 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 always I, use, I, I, I always use my eyes first and then the stats to back it up what I'm seeing. But with, with, with your eyes, mm. they're looking like Dr. Anthony Mackie, kind of like shady. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So like, what if your eyes are wrong? What if it's a spec savers team and you can't see? Bro, listen, I've always had this take on Saka. Right, you know Cameron, the one that comes on the terrace, my, one of my yes, boys, yeah, United yeah, fan, yeah, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Me and him have always like he doesn't like Saka. He, he hates him, right? And I've I've always defended Saka and say, listen, Saka's not he's not dead. He's good, right? And for me, he can become world class. But I've always said he's 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 overrated, right? I see so many games where he goes. I see so many games where. You know, he, he has a stinker, yeah. but then you'll get a goal and it's similar to Salah in a way. Yeah. And the Arsenal fans will talk about his performance as if he'd done a madness. And that's where I've, I've got a problem with it because I'm like, yo, you're not going to gaslight what we just watched because we all watch, we watch, we watch our teams, but we watch other teams yeah. as well, rivals, right? And for me, there's, there's one too, once too often where I see Saka not involved in the game too much. Cool, fair enough, he puts up the numbers. But for me, Cole Palmer over 90 minutes gets involved a lot more. He gets involved a lot more. And, and the eye test as well. 
He meets the eye test as well. It, it, and on top of that, he yeah. does also put up numbers, bro. That's what so, I'm saying. So I think the eye test is an important part of football. But where I I personally draw a line in, just in my own head is I look at someone like Jack Grealish. That man can have a stinker, but he still looks good. Because he's because he passes the I mean he's a good looking geezer as well he passes <laughs> he the looks better at Villa though. What, he what looks I'm, better at Villa yeah he does but what I mean by that is because of the way he passes the way he looks when he controls because of his touch like he'll bring three or four balls out of the air and the crowd will clap and I think sometimes that element of football clouds your judgment because you'll remember oh weren't that a great touch weren't that a great skill but at the end of it what was produced I do, right I do agree I do agree a little bit because I feel like with Salah and Saka on the eye they're not very pleasing technically like you said they're not mm. like fold in their square they bring the ball down they can push it to the right push it to the left and they're comfy on both sides yeah. they're, they're a bit more rigid mm. you can tell they've had to work their way up and get a lot better into their positions but you can't take away from Saka like you said what he's actually done because yeah, you can't. over you can't. Year, well, year on year he has got better mm -hmm. he's, he's improved every single part about his game He's getting the goals and assists, not as many penalties as Cole Palmer. And like I said, I feel like there has been a lot of games where Saka's not turned up and Palmer probably will give you more in a bad game than what he does. But when Saka has a good game, mm. he is having a really good game and he can cook wingers I, I, and he can cause them problems. That's no, the, no, no, exactly, no. Jules. You hit the nail on the head. Yeah. That's the thing. I have seen Saka cook wingers, right? I want him to do that more. And more, yeah, but you know I, what I mean? Wait, I want to do I'm, it consistently, I'm not gonna bro. Lie, I'm not... I, I've, I've said Saka can become world class. No one, people think I don't like Saka. I think Saka's a good player, but I just don't put him on this yeah. level that mm. everyone but, else does. But, bro. but I can't lie. what you're saying about Saka there, like, I think with Palmer again, his aesthetics hides the poorness because yes, he's been quality, and yes, he's been Chelsea's best player this season. But I do look at him sometimes. I'm like, right, like what? Have you contributed some nice passes, maybe a penalty or maybe a good goal, but like when your overall team, you're losing. You know what I mean? Nah, your come on, team, KJ. So, 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 come on. I think, I think there's on, an element yeah. of that, right? And, and as I say, when it comes, I, I rated Jack Grealish before. I still think Jack Grealish is a good player, but he can go for a game and do nothing, but people still rave about him because he did things that look good. And the problem is with, I, the eye test has become such a broad comment now, but I see a lot of people judging footballers like they're, the judges on Britain's Got Talent judging a dance group. They're looking at the, the timing or the lines no. or the shape or how nice it looks. As opposed to, so we, we've seen it this week with, with, with Harlan. Roy Keane started it by saying he's a League Two player. And then every one of the sort of the tacticos and the hipster footballers online have jumped on it. Yeah, yeah. And someone said this to me this week and it just maybe hit home. Where they said, Terry, he is the greatest goal scorer in the world right now. But as a footballer, he's not very good. And that was the moment where I went, it was like an epiphany. When I realised, but being the greatest goal scorer as a professional in real matches makes, makes you a brilliant football footballer. footballer. Yeah. You're mm -hmm. judging him based on free, you know, the, the boys that used to do freestyle football, Billy and um, what was his name, Jeremy, right? Yeah, yeah Harlan can't do any of that, and I reckon Carl Palmer's better at doing that stuff than Saka. But that's never been wholly how football players have been judged. Now we've had some players mm. like. Maradona, like Messi, that, that, hazard, could, that, that can do all of that. No, 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 not Hazard. The example I was going to give you is that have all yeah. of that and consistently deliver. <laughs> oh, come on. Hazard yeah. consistently delivered. What are we doing what, here? What, like Maradona and Messi. Oh, come on. That's different level. No, 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 no but, that's the, but that's the level I'm giving. I'm talking about you have some people who are at that level. You then get the next level or two down where you get amazing skill, consistently deliver. But then there's been far more players that are more Mo Salah level, more Saka level, where it doesn't look particularly great, but they're consistent mm. and they're efficient. Mm. And as a professional footballer, they deliver. So for me, I try not, as best I can, to be hoodwinked by the aesthetics. Now, nah, come on, by how it looks. Let's let's not act as if yeah we don't turn it, we don't tune into certain games to watch a specific player. No, I don't. Yeah, there's no, gonna never, there's, ha, never bro, have never have. Hold on, hold on. When I, I, when, when I went to the bridge, when I went to the bridge, when I went to the bridge, never for, have. Um, yeah. When I went to the bridge, yeah, to watch. Uh, that's that's you personally. Cool. <laughs> when I went to the bridge, when I went to the bridge, yeah, to go watch uh, the Arsenal game, right? Yeah. One of my boys was there. He's a United fan. Yeah. He was waxing lyrical about Cole Palmer. I said, Yo, this guy. Yeah, he's one of them guys when you're at the bridge, when you're watching it in the stadium, every time he gets on the ball, people start to stand up and that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, mate, right? I understand there's, that. There's so, many, there's so many players in football where people will pay the money to just go watch them. So and I, Cole Palmer's so one of them. I understand. Right? Cole, so pa Cole not, Palmer, not, hang on, there are not queues of people outside Stamford Bridge, tourists, and 
I'm here today to watch Carl Palmer. <laughs> bro, 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 bro. I'm saying that ain't I'm happening. Say, I'm say, bro, hold on, hold on, hold on. See what I'm saying? Hold on, hold on. The, the, the spec savers, bro. No, bro, bro. I'm saying. I'm, I'm saying he comes from that family. Can you turn he the comes, lights down? He's <laughs> hurting his eyes. I don't he know what's going on here. He, he comes from that family of footballers where it what they do he is Jogger Bonito, bro. It's Jogger Bonito. Looks like Lee Gunner's son. Jogger Bonito. Jogger Bonito. Jules, teach him about Jogger Bonito. Come on, KJ, KJ. You're going to be jogging on in a minute. I'm telling you. Are we acting? Are we acting like people don't tune in? Yeah. No, no. To watch. To watch. Okay. To watch. To watch. To watch. You have to remember. To watch. Cole Palmer. Because our team's crap, bro. He's I, 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 he's I, I, a shining light. Also, also, but what you, you have guys to remember now, the, thing, the thing is, now the thing is that you're forgetting though, Don, is what some people tune in for and what other people tune in. Some people would rather see a player score goals because that they're gonna celebrate those moments. You're yeah. gonna remember those moments. Yeah, so yeah, when a player scores a goal, yeah. that is Jogger yeah, Benito. Yeah, he's scoring goals. Hold on, I get the point. What you're saying is true. George, go on, go on. I just wanted to say, right? I I get where you're coming from. First of all, I don't think people are queuing up just yet for Cole Palmer. If, if on, I'm telling you, if, people are going if, to Chelsea games to watch Cole Palmer. If, I'm telling you now, if, <laughs> he's been that good. He's okay, been that good. Okay, bro. okay, okay. You're laughing now. I he's don't, been that I good. don't think there is some kid sitting in Sydney, Australia, saying, "Daddy, can we save up to go to England to go to Stamford Bridge because I have to watch Cole Palmer play." Wait, like, if I said about Copy Mania, you will be flipping yeah. laughing. Bro. Oh, come on, we're talking about a guy that's got 33 GA. Everybody hates stats until one of their players has good stats. I don't hate. But, 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 what, I think but, but what I want to say is this though, right? Is I understand there are certain players that people do want to go and see, mm. but you are talking about R9, Ronaldo, Ronaldinho level footballers who are, th these people will be legends in 150 years time. Those players, I, I totally agree. But most football fans that go to football matches, go to watch their team try and win a, try course, and win a yeah, football match. Yeah. First, the secondary element, I, I, and against the end, there is an entertainment element that comes to football. But again, you speak to most season ticket holders, they're not necessarily buying the ticket just to be entertained. They want to see their team win. They, they do want to see good football. I think it's all encompassed. But I think that when you're judging players, just judging it, and a lot of people do only judge footballers based on the aesthetics and how, that's where I disagree. And, and how entertaining they find it, that's where I've got a problem. So I've got no issue with someone saying, I think technically as a footballer, Cole Palmer is better than Saka. But to be a better professional footballer, he has to outperform Saka consistently over a number of seasons. And that's why right now I can't put Carl Palmer above Saka because it's it's a brilliant season. So what's, so what's, your, what's, your, what's, your, what's your measuring stick then? How long does so, Palmer have to do this? So I would, I would, I would, I don't have a direct set amount, but I would turn around and say it's got to be at least three seasons. And I'll give you an example. Kobe Mainu looks excellent right now. I'm not going to turn around and say he's a better central midfielder than say, he's a really good central midfielder in the Prem we could use as a stick. No, Douglas Louise. No, they're saying, yeah, they're they're saying, higher, saying higher. Declan Rice. Yeah. Okay. I wouldn't say right now, I think technically you can make an argument that, that the the pirouettes, the touches and turns from Cobby Main, you could argue, are more aesthetically pleasing than Declan Rice's. Yeah. I think it's a yeah. fair argument. Mm -hmm. yeah. But to say he's better than Declan Rice, he has got Declan Rice has been doing it, was he 25, 26? About eight, nine years. Main who's got to show it for, for longer. That's why I said there's no set time. It depends on the age of the player. Main who's got to do what he's doing now and more for three, four, five years for me to genuinely believe and say, I think he's better than him. Now, I might turn around and say, I look at his talent and say, I think he could become better than him. I think the wording is really important because what I don't like to remove from people is what they've already done or already achieved yeah. as a footballer. Yeah. Cole Palmer's start, I'm not, this, is, this is his breakthrough season. I know he made some appearances for City, but few and far between. He has been phenomenal. But I can't put him above Saka yet, and I can't put him anywhere uh, uh, anywhere near Foden yet because Foden's above both of them because nah, the, man's, than both the yeah. man's done it in yeah. every single do, do, capacity. Do you, know what, do you know why? Do you know why I'm confident in saying this about Palmer though? Because you know my take when we signed Cole Palmer, and I was yeah. getting yeah, cooked yeah, in, yeah, in the yeah. chat, right? Was, Everything that I said about him has come to fruition, right? Mm -hmm. Because I watched him at Man City, I watched him through the England setup as well, and I get what you're saying about aesthetics because end of the day, we've had players like Tarat, you know, who yeah. look good on the eye, but then in terms of Oh, GA and whatnot, they haven't put up the numbers, I mean, but Cole Palmer, Palmer's done that. He, he, but what he, you've he, also he got to remember, both, I remember both. though, when I was much younger, I was at an after dinner event and uh, Sean Wright Phillips was there. My dad, mm. my dad used to do a lot of after dinner speaking and he used to get a lot of ex-footballers. And Sean Wright Phillips spoke about how in his sort of first couple of years breaking through, he said he's killing it. Chelsea wanted him, I think they bought him in the England squad. He was good for us. Then he had this like dip and he put the dip down to Basically, and he was told this as he got older by coaches, he goes, we worked out what you were good at and bad at. When you first break through, you're an mm. unknown quantity. So it's sometimes easier to kill it. 
Gareth Bale went through this at Spurs. Yeah. He was a left back. Then he became a forward. And he killed it for about a year, 18 months. And then suddenly people started doubling up fullbacks on him. They started showing him more on the inside than the outside. And I'm not saying he dipped, but he went through a little period where he wasn't the and he dipped and he had I feel to, like you're seeing that soccer right now. He had to yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. And then you have to work <laughs> a way through it. You have to redevelop almost as a football player to come out the other end. Then then what happens is you either become a nanny who got to a certain point and then just petered stagnated, out or stay the same stagnated, stagnated, stagnated and then petered out or you go to that next level like a Gareth Bale where you break through those barriers so that's also with Carl Palmer there will be a million and one coaches this summer mm. studying the footage on him with so much detail working out what stops because what all clubs do is they focus on lots of dangerous players at clubs how do we stop that individual that's when you know if he then starts working through those tactics where he's being doubled up upon maybe it's being shown on the outside inside maybe it's roughing him up I don't know what the answer is I'm yeah. not a coach but if he then perseveres through that and keeps doing it that's when you know you've got a real gem yeah. because it might just be start standing on his feet and pinching the back of his legs and hurting him and he might become a shrinking violet, like yeah. a like an Ozil. You crunched Ozil, he, he disappeared for the rest of the game. Yeah. I'm not saying that will be Cole Palmer, but that's why I think you have to, you can hype a kid, you can praise how good they are, but I think you have to slow down from putting them above people that are more tried and tested because they haven't, they haven't had the miles yet. That's yeah. all. But I do think he's, he's had an amazing breakthrough season. One of the signings of the campaign, th there's no doubt. In terms of mm. other um, games that are on this week, and I want to do some quick score predictions from you all. Your boy Spurs... Playing Nottingham Forest, 6 p.m. on Sunday. How do you see it going? We're going to end the weekend with a bang, man. We're at home. Um, I can only see this being a two or three goals. Might get our first clean sheet in a couple months too, so, <laughs> hey, big win, big win. I think we're going to end this with a bang. Are you yeah. home for this game? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll win that. And you're away to Sheffield United. <laughs> lose, what, lose, win or draw? What you got you going with? We've got to have some shame. We have to have some shame, so I have to predict a win for this one. You know, no, bro, Come on, Don. No, no, no. You but know that, your team, and be yeah. honest, what do you actually think is going to happen? Because you know your that, team. You're drawing that big game. game. Big win, and then you know what's happening. You know, you know you're drawing that game. You know what right? it is? Every, everyone that faces Chelsea knows that they've got a chance of winning, you know? Mm. But I think that win yesterday is going to do something for these lot, man, because the, the celebrations at the end of the game. Yeah, yeah, if that like, does torch. something for your players, if that win does something for your players, mm. your, your, your guys are shameless, bro. Of course. Of course. The, you got, the, if you kick on from here after that win, Shameless. Man. I know. You, you I know. guys, it's, 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 it's annoying. It's annoying. But you know, the crazy part is like we have games in hand. We've got enough games to still finish it, in a brother, respectable yeah. position. I know what you're gonna say. Because yeah. yeah. you know what? The end of the so season. often this season, we heard Don say Chelsea's mm. better than United, Chelsea. and we've laughed at him for a long time. <laughs> yeah, we've we've honestly I mean, laughed, but we wasn't at the beginning. Now, bro. Bro. by the end of this weekend, it could be a two point gap. Bro, it's why I'm, yeah, exactly. It's why I'm only wearing dark trousers. If we beat Burnley, we would have been two points behind right now, right? And then would have literally gone to Sheffield. If we beat them and you lose to Liverpool, we would have been above them by a point. I know. Yeah, but but look at artists, artists, though. Artists are equal. Mm. If we see it through against you, if we see it through against Brentford, we're 11 points yeah, above yeah, I still yeah, think yeah. we'll finish yeah. ahead of Chelsea. It might only be by a point. point Terry, point, Terry, don't, don't, don't predict it. I think, but I only say that, I'm only saying we're both as bad as each other. Do you know what? No, I think you'll beat Sheffield United. I think you'll beat 2-1. I'm going to say I'm gonna say 3-1, man, because we score goals. We score goals. I'll say 3. And I'll go to you on this one, KJ. Palace first kickoff of the weekend in a couple of hours' time. Of course, this is going out Saturday morning. Um, Palace versus Man City, twelve thirty kickoff. Who are you going with? Uh, Man City. I know Palace is their bogey team. They've done them. Done early them kickoff weird. as well, man. Oh, twelve thirty in it. Twelve thirty in it. Yeah, right, listen, twelve thirty kickoffs are the strangest thing. I don't know why a time in the day changes the fact. What, that why do I feel like Man City back. hardly get any early kickoffs? Like because they don't because of the brown envelopes. That's why. That's that's part of one hundred fifteen. One hundred sixteen. One hundred sixteen. And, and the amount of times we hear Pep complain about travelling into London early kickoff. I know there's an excuse. Yeah, coming yeah. We're now. Mm. Mm. I, I, I can't ever take these. The way they. The way these millionaire clubs travel they make it sound like they're like having to like bust like hustle what's it called uh, hi, uh hitchhike <laughs> they make it sound like they're hitchhiking and it's stressful it's like love you flying private jets your first class on trains Literally. the whole you see when like a club's at a train station waiting to get a train and there's no other people on it it's because they clear the train track for them it's like they, these guys are yeah, pretty man, much done man, that, man, man city man city i'm gonna i'm gonna throw this out i'm gonna go for a little draw i'm gonna go for a little two two again i wouldn't be surprised what, a Pal a palace i'm just going for a two two i don't know why there's no logic to it. I'm just saying two two. I'm throwing it out there into the ether. I, think City, I will say, what, do you think? Do you think Foden will start in midfield again? With yeah, he's got to. to. He's got to. Because he's, he's rested KDB, isn't it? He's just yeah. K, I think KDB. Harlan got rested as well, so my man's gonna be. I, 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 that's another thing, mm. especially what Voykin has been saying about my man. 
and he hasn't had a chance to reply yet. Oh, he's the, yeah, you, he's you, bagging, he's bagging, he's bagging a hat trick. He scores a hat yeah, he's bagging yeah. a hat trick. He certainly yeah, is. Yeah. Uh, look, viewers, I want to thank you all very, very much for tuning in as always. Hit like buttons, leave your comments below, subscribe. If you're watching on Rumble, subscribe. If you're watching on YouTube, get over to our Rumble channel because moving forward, these shows will be exclusive over there. Don, George, KJ, always a pleasure as ever. Take care, goodbye, God bless, and I'll see you all again soon. Peace.